Hey there, it's Jenny from Southern Savers. Glad to have you guys join me tonight. Um, I hope that we're all good. I've been having some internet troubles, um, but hopefully we are up and you can see and you can hear. If you have any issues, try reloading um, your browser and see if that works, um, but hopefully this will hold and we won't have any issues tonight. Uh, we are gonna chat about avoiding coupon fraud, spotting what's a good deal, what's a bad deal in the sense of coupons that are out there because there are definitely some not legit offers that you're going to find and how to not use those because we don't really want to be in that position. Uh, and then we're going to go wherever your questions take us. So if you have a CVS question or Rite Aid or wherever, I am fine with it. We will talk about it all. Um, so to ask questions, head into the chat. You have to log in um, and enter through the little plus button of the chat down at the bottom. And I will see it. Everyone else will see it. A lot of times they will answer your question before I even get there, but we will definitely get all of your questions answered. Um, it's not usually a problem. So to dive in to coupon fraud, um, first off, printable coupons and how to avoid kind of the classic fraudulent coupons because classic fraudulent coupons are printables that have existed for a long time. And I don't mean coupons that you went and you printed legitimately from coupons.com or the ones that are hosted on Southern Savers. All of those, those are fine. What I'm talking about are the coupons that someone sends to you in your email that say free Tide or free chicken. Um, they're usually PDF coupons, which means that you open them using a PDF viewer. It's like the ending.pdf is, is its name. Um, you would open them using a viewer. Your computer's actually gonna say, hey, how many of these do you want? And you're gonna print 10 because it's a free Tide coupon. Uh, but the real problem is that it's not a legitimate coupon. It wasn't Tide that issued it. It was someone that made a false barcode. Uh, does the barcode work? Possibly. It, it is probably coded to be a free product Tide barcode, but it's an old barcode. Um, so if you were to go and print a coupon right now, you'll notice that new barcodes have two layers to them. A new barcode is really called a data bar. Um, and to give you an example of what this looks like, um, I'm gonna pull up an image that we can all see. Um, so really quick, I will share my screen with you in just a second after it finishes loading. Um, oh. Let's see. Just trying to open up the, the picture versus the whole website. Um, come on, okay. Uh, let me share my screen and then you will see um, what I am talking about. So looking at this picture of a printable coupon, and this is an old picture, but it uh, just kind of shows you what a true printable coupon should look like. You notice that there are two barcodes. Um, this barcode on the left, the small traditional barcode that's been around for decades, that's old. They don't actually make coupons with that barcode anymore. Very rare to have that barcode. Most coupons have this guy, which is called a data bar. It's very long, it's double layer. There's a lot more information in a data bar and it's actually a lot harder to recreate fraudulently. Uh, a small little barcode, very easy to recreate, very simple to follow, just plugging in the brand's um, information, and the free or the value off. It's really all that's in an old barcode. The new data bar, which I say new, it really came out almost two years ago. The data bar holds a ton of information. The brand, the package size, it can even hold other details about the package. If they wanted you to buy the apple scented body wash, it can hold that uh, value. It can even hold multiple brands. So those coupons that we see for, you know, a um, dollar off of Nabisco, uh, Honey Grahams, Hershey's Chocolate, and Kraft Marshmallows, uh, that requires all three products. That data bar can track up to five different brands and five different products. 
the old barcode could not. So the old barcode had a lot of room for fraud. People would learn that you would get a coupon for Pillsbury rolls and you could really use them for any Pillsbury product. That's wrong. We want to use a coupon for exactly what it's specified. Uh, in, even if it works, that's not the point. Uh, the point is to use the coupon for what the manufacturer intended the discount to be. So if the manufacturer is giving you a discount on ivory bar soap, that's what we're going to use the coupon for, not for a, a completely different product. Um, so we cre they created the new data bar, a lot more information and a, a lot harder to use in a fraudulent manner. Does that mean that when I go and I buy something that sometimes a coupon doesn't work, or, or sorry, does work on a product that's not specified? No, it still works uh, a number of times, but we really shouldn't be using it in that manner. We need to be using it the way that the coupon specifies. And you're seeing a lot more uh, a lot more stores requiring that, uh, that it needs to be clearly in the words what you're buying, that they're looking at that. What makes me cringe though are the stores that are going off the picture. So just so we clarify that, you may print a coupon for General Mills cereal, dollar off three, General Mills cereal. They cannot picture all of the General Mills cereal on that one coupon. It's not possible. They make a lot of cereal. So we will. We are finding some stores. Publix is actually the one in a lot of areas that's doing this saying, well, that product's not in the picture, so you can't use the coupon. Okay, do you know how many boxes of General Mills cereal would have to be in the picture? And you would have to have a magnifying glass just to be able to see all of the boxes of cereal if it was a coupon for a dollar off three, any General Mills cereal. So the picture is not what we need to focus on is the words. And hopefully you don't run into the cashier who's off trying to analyze the picture. It's really the words that we're wanting to focus on. If it specifically states, you know, that you can use it on this product, then that's allowed. That's what we're gonna go with. Um, now David's asking, are these on eBay? David, there are some fraudulent coupons on eBay. Uh, a lot of the ones that we see on eBay right now uh, aren't always grocery, but are store specific. There are a lot of folks that sell fraudulent Lowe's and Home Depot coupons uh, in bulk. Will they work? Possibly. Is that Lowe's distributing them? No. And that is why a lot of coupons specifically say void if sold um, and a whole bunch of other um, things beyond it is to kind of end the eBay selling of those illegitimate uh, coupons. Um, let me see what we can find just searching really quick in the Tide realm and hopefully the uh, completely free ones are gone off of that. Yeah, I don't see any of the, um, the horrible, horrible uh, Tide ones that we used to have which were completely free Tide detergent. Now, if you're curious what kind of offers I'm talking about, um, I would um, recommend that you head to the CIC, uh, dot, I think it's .org, I'm trying it right now just to make sure. It's the Coupon Information Council. Um, and yeah, uh, nope, that is not where you wanna go. I don't know what, CI, what, what CIC.org is, but don't go there. Um, Let's see, coupon information. Well, I'll find it. But this is a little trickier tonight. Um, it's run by a man named Bud Miller. It, it's a website, but he's also a lawyer and he keeps a running log. I'll put the link in here as soon as I find it. He keeps a running log of all of the fraudulent coupons that are submitted to um, his company. Um, couponinformationcenter.com, so it's all spelled out. It used to be much shorter. Um, so he also litigates coupon fraud. So this is the guy that you don't ever want to meet. I'm going to put this in chat just so you can head there if you're curious. Um, if you head to that website, this is Bud Miller's website, really. Bud Miller runs the whole Coupon Information Corporation. He litigates issues. He also keeps, again, the running list of offers. Um, and counterfeit coupons. He'll run alerts too. So if someone ever emails you a coupon and you're thinking, you know, I just really don't know uh, if this coupon is right, if I should be using it or not using it, um, then you can come here and you can 
um, kind of sort through the list of what he keeps on the site and see exactly whether or not it's already been reported. And he does keep a very thorough list of coupons that have been reported as fraudulent and even way, way far back. But the big ones to watch for are the ones that your friend emails you. They've been passed around for years. So if a coupon comes via email from your friend, probably not legit. Um, so online, few key ways. We print it from a major company like coupons.com, Smart Source, Red Plum. Those are all the printables that are on Southern Savers. I don't actually host any of these coupons. I just have their pages on Southern Savers, but it's really run through coupons.com and Smart Source. So that's number one, you went through a major company. Number two, you went through the brand's website. So I went to kellogs.com, they had coupons on their site. I went to even a, a store, I went to sears.com and they had a printable coupon or whatever it may be. It needs to be hosted by the brand. So if you find a store printable coupon, like a 10% off Lowe's coupon, and it's hosted on jackscoupons.com, Lowe's isn't gonna do that. That has no benefit to Lowe's. Lowe's, if they're gonna give you a coupon, they want you to go to their website. They want you to like their Facebook page. They don't want you to like some random person's Facebook page. Um, so the ones that we saw pop up a couple of weeks ago for Publix, don't know if any of y'all saw this, this was $100 off of a $110 order. Really, you think Publix is gonna put a coupon out like that? No, and it was hosted by some random Facebook page, not Publix.com. You had to like that Facebook page, you had to share it on your wall. That's the point here. This is a fraudulent coupon and they are using it to build their own followers and their own likes. Publix isn't gonna do that. That's massive amounts off and if it were legitimate, Publix isn't gonna give that to anybody, but if they did, they would want their own PR from it and their own media, so they wanna build their own Facebook page. These should all be red flags to you. If it's not hosted by the company or by the brand, that becomes a big one. Um, so just kind of stop at that point. Hopefully that helps in a, in a lot of things, spotting printable coupons that are fraudulent. Knowing your store's policy is also gonna help you. Not saying that you were gonna use something that was fraudulent in the first place, but let's say that I went to coupons.com and I printed that buy one, get one Horizon Snacks coupon. It's a legitimate coupon, not saying it's not, but you are a Harris Teeter shopper and you head into Harris Teeter to use that. They're not gonna take it. Harris Teeter does not accept free coupon or coupons for free products that are printable and most, like 99% of the stores, um, word that or, or look at that wording and say that includes buy one, get one coupons. So they don't take a printable buy one, get one coupon. They would take all your other printable coupons. You're gonna bring them, but not the buy one, get one. So just don't even take the time to print it. That's gonna be a waste of your time, but you're also gonna find yourself in a disagreement with the cashier really quickly that you don't wanna be in. So using legitimate coupons, but also using them according to the source policy is really putting the two together. That's how we're couponing correctly and not fraudulently through all of this. Um, really quick, Rosalie has a question on printing. I can't print um, smart source coupons. It says my computer is too new and they're upgrading the system. Have you seen this? So Rosalie, um, I'm curious if you either are on Windows 10 or you're using Google Chrome. Um, I have seen it. First to start with Google Chrome because this is affecting everyone. Google Chrome uh, made a big update went out to all systems, so I'm a Mac girl, it affects me too on a Mac, uh, and Smart Source wasn't ready for that update. But you have a solution, you have two solutions. One, you could downgrade Google Chrome, if that's what, what, you, what your problem is. You can downgrade back to the old version or the most recent older version of Google Chrome, it would work again, or just get a second browser. Uh, really, I would recommend the second browser over downgrading because there are gonna be lots of times that this happens and having a second browser where you can jump over to Firefox um, and be able to print through there usually solves the problem to me. So I have Firefox and Chrome. Right now I can't print uh, Smart Source and Chrome, but I can hop open at Firefox and I can print those coupons without a problem. So I would try that, switching web browsers, and I only use Firefox and Chrome. Uh, if you are still using Internet Explorer, then you are, um, I don't know, like 20 years behind the times. It feels like most web designers, even the words Internet Explorer, like fingernails on a chalkboard, just don't 
don't go there. It's a whole new internet when you venture out into Chrome and Firefox and away from Internet Explorer. And there's a reason that they just killed it. So if you haven't heard, Internet Explorer is dead. Microsoft doesn't make it anymore. They've come out with a whole new web browser product. Just go with Chrome or Firefox. Um, now, Windows 10, if that's the issue. So Rosalie, if you go, you get Firefox. It's still giving you the same. Your system is too new. Um, the Windows 10 issue, I'm not quite sure how to help you. And that, that can be a problem with upgrading too soon for some people. So if you really do have a brand new computer, it already has Windows 10 on it and there wasn't anything you did, then you're gonna need to wait a little bit if the Firefox option doesn't help. But for anyone else that is still on Windows 8 and you're wanting to upgrade to Windows 10, I think it's funny that they just skipped nine, um, wait. Don't be an early adopter in coupon land. Being an early adopter in coupon land is dangerous because they do have to take time to get their plugins to work with the new software systems. And that's not overnight. It's not a Windows 10 came out today and we are ready tomorrow because Windows doesn't tell them. Chrome doesn't tell them what these updates are going to be. They have to wait. They have to see the update and then they have to build a new plugin to work with it. So don't be an early adopter uh, if you have that option, which most Windows 8 folks do have the option right now. It's a free download. They're allowing everyone with Windows 8 to have a free download to get to Windows 10, uh, but don't take that download quite yet. Give, up, give it a couple more weeks until these systems are ready. But hopefully, Rosalie, switching to Firefox will solve it and you won't be stuck waiting for a little bit longer. And just to warn you, smart source is always late to the game. Uh, they don't, they're more focused on the print version of coupons that are in your Sunday paper. And their online version of coupons is really kind of like the redheaded stepchild of the company. They don't put a lot of time or money or effort into it. So they're slower on getting new systems out uh, compared to coupons.com and the other systems that are there. Coupons.com doesn't have a newspaper version. They're only online. Um, it's probably a really long answer, but hopefully you learned something through all that answer. Um, speaking of newspaper coupons, I do want to mention that there's some fraud that can happen there. You should never make a copy of a coupon. I don't really care where the coupon came from. A lot of folks print them offline and think, you know, it just printed on my computer. It's not really any different if I just print another copy or scan it and make another copy. There's a lot of uh, security features in a printable coupon. And if you make a copy, they're going to know that it's a copy. It's not hard for them. Um, but I'm not allowed to make copies of newspaper coupons either. So please don't do that. And I know for most people that just, of course, you wouldn't do that. But I have met a lot of people in traveling the South and trying to teach couponing that have been doing that. So no, you may never make a copy of a coupon. Uh, with printable coupons, in general, you should only be allowed to per computer. Um, if you have a, another computer, it doesn't matter if they share the same printer. You're actually allowed two per computer, not per printer. So I have a laptop. My husband has a laptop. I can actually get four using the same printer most times. And that's legitimately, but I don't need to make copies of those four. So make sure you're following that rule as well. And newspaper coupons can still be used incorrectly. So follow the wording on the newspaper coupon too, uh, not just buying and using it on whatever you want in the category. It needs to be whatever the newspaper coupon specifies. Um, okay, Chandra's question. I went to Walmart while I was on vacation and before leaving, I called the store and asked them how many miles away they would price match and they told me 50. I got to the, to the register to price match a few items at Bilo and the cashier informed me that they don't price match Bilo. The nearest Bilo was 17 miles away. Um, Chandra, I'm not really sure why they wouldn't price, price match Bilo. Every Walmart should price match every store within 50 miles, especially grocery. I would have, I, I don't know if you went to the, you know, let me talk to a manager level that might have solved that problem. Um, you know, just to point out this Bilo is, is 17 miles away and you should price match it. Uh, I do know that some of the things that they won't price match, there are some items in a Bilo ad that they won't price match. Uh, and those would be promotional items. So if you are trying to price match a meal deal or a deal that gave fuel perks uh, or even an instant savings deal. So Bilo had a deal recently where you bought five participating items and you got $5 off instantly. 
uh, those deals, they won't price match for any grocery store, but every other deal or savings in Bilo should be price matched. Uh, in my neck of the woods, they'll price match all of the grocery stores, all the um, Dollar General, Family Dollar. They will price match drug stores, but they won't price match extra care bucks and other rewards. So most of the time, the drug store is really a better deal in the drug store. Well, 99% of the time, the deal is always a better deal in the original store, not in Walmart. But I understand for you, like, it's uh, saving you time to not go 17 miles to a Bilo and to just go to the Walmart and get the deals. I would have taken it to the manager level. If the manager still said no, I possibly still would submit just a letter to corporate, really just to say, hey, I was in the store and I had a really bad experience. You say you price match and they wouldn't allow it. Um, if anything, you're solving problems for other people that live in the area, but you should always send that on, uh, whether you call or email corporate and let them know that you had problems. Um, it's, it's just kind of a nice thing to do for all of us because hopefully it will solve them for other folks. Melanie, uh, sorry, Kate says, I know you get two coupons per computer, but how do you know when the coupons have reset and you can print two more copies? Is it the first of the month or not necessarily the first of the month? Kate, that's a really common question. Um, it depends on where you're printing them. So if you're printing them from like a mass coupon site, like coupons.com or any of the pages that are um, part of Southern Savers, a majority of those coupons all reset on the first of the month, meaning you printed two and you can print two more. Sometimes they even reset in the middle of the month. They have a massive budget. Nobody's really printing them. And so coupons.com says, you know what? We're just going to clear it out. and We're going to let everybody print them again because they don't want to leave money on the table. They're not about to do that. So those sites tend to reset much more frequently. If I'm on a manufacturer's website, though, and I'm looking at uh, you know, Barilla Pasta or Ronzoni Pasta coupons. Um, that printable coupon could reset monthly, could reset every six months, could reset once a year. And you have no clue of knowing when. Uh, you're going to need to just get in the habit of trying uh, every now and then. If you find that, you know, you printed it last month, I try next month and it still doesn't let me, then try a couple more months out. I don't know that I'd keep trying every single week, but most of them are either one month, six month, or a year in those markings. A couple sites I found will be quarterly, but most are not one month, six months, or a year. Um, and hopefully that will end up helping. Remember though, Kate, if you have the option available to you that you could use a different computer. So maybe I printed the Ronzoni coupons on my laptop, then the next time I wanna get Ronzoni in a month or so, it doesn't work, I'll ask my husband, hey, can you print this coupon for me? Because he hasn't, and hopefully it will work for him. So you can always try it anyway. Um, but sadly, there's just no way to know with the brand pages. Um, okay, other offers. Um, I talked a little bit about the Publix offer in Facebook. Um, but that really applies to any type of sale that you see. So just to throw this one out there, it's not necessarily coupon, but it's fraud all the way around. That's really to, to kind of get your personal information. So if you're on Facebook and you see giveaways, um, this is a big one. Disney is the one I see a lot of. We're giving away 10 Disney cruises like us. And you notice that the Facebook page has Disney in the name, but they don't have a lot of Facebook fans. They don't have the little check mark for being a, um, verified Facebook page. So Disney has a mark that's right next to their Facebook page to, to show that they are the verified Facebook page for Disney. Don't like their page. Don't share their giveaway. Don't even enter their giveaway. They're not legitimate. They're not going to give away those products. They have no reason to do this. And what they're really doing, just to fill you in on, on the back end of what's happening, they're going to get a ton of people to like them, a ton of shares, a lot of engagement. And then within about a month, that brand page is actually going to completely change its name. They're going to sell all those likes and what they've built to another company. So it's going to become a company's website that wasn't who you liked and shared and whatnot. They were just using really bad PR tactics to build an overnight Facebook page. So uh, before you start going and liking things, which opens up your personal information to a lot of them, don't do that. Um, instead, make sure it's a legitimate company before I'm gonna go and enter a, a fake giveaway. Let's just not do it all the way around. Um, 
And anytime you have to print a coupon from Facebook, make sure it's the brand's page that you're printing a coupon from so we don't have a Publix issue like the one that I mentioned earlier. Um, but also go ahead and honestly, brand won't like that I'm saying this, but go ahead and unlike them right after you print it. So they may require that you like them, you print the coupon, and then um, unlike them. And honestly, it's against Facebook's policies to require you to like them anymore. It's called a fan gate is what they use to put in. You must be a fan. If you weren't a fan, then you got this separate page that said you must like us. But fan gates are against policies. So if you come across a page that's requiring you to like them, they've really already broken Facebook policies. And maybe they don't know that, so we'll give them benefit of the doubt. But let's not continue to like a brand just because we went there to get their coupon. Now, if you love their product, go for it. But most of us, that's not how we work. Um, so just like them, print the coupon, and unlike them before you even move off the page. Elizabeth um, says, I have a question about CVS. Anyone notice that offers are disappearing from their online accounts and all of a sudden zero offers? So Melanie, you're not alone. This is everybody in CVS land. I don't know whether CVS made an update. I have no clue. I just know they're having issues. And I've emailed their corporate office. They've said they're having issues, but they are saying that they've kind of, I guess, figured out that they may not have a solution to this for a couple of months. Um, but in the email that I received, they are saying that people are still getting offers from the coupon center. I'm not finding that to be true. When I hit the stores, I'm getting maybe three or four coupons compared to what I used to get, which was a lot more. Now, if any of y'all are finding that you hit the store and you're still getting a ton of offers, great, please share. But um, for most of us, it, it kind of feels like the CVS coupon world is dying um, because the offers are so much lower than they used to be. I'm going to go and hope that they're being honest when they say we're having some technical difficulties. and. Hopefully they'll get that worked out, um, but that's what corporate has emailed back to me. So you're not alone. It's a general issue for everybody, and they know it. So hopefully they'll get it fixed, and we'll start to see our offers reappear back online and in the stores uh, as well. There are still some good deals, though. So if you're brand new and you're thinking about starting CVS, there are still some great deals to grab, really good deals on diapers this week, which is one of the biggest reasons to go to the drugstores if you have a little person. Uh, and Teray says, I'm not getting any coupons in my email at all yet. Yeah, I am not as well, Teray. I haven't gotten CVS coupons in a really long time. We were mentioning this um, in the past, and one person said they had just gotten one last week. Uh, but for me, I even searched spam. I haven't gotten a CVS, like typical store coupon printout and use in the store or send to card in probably two or three months now. Uh, it's been a while. So hopefully somebody's still getting them, but I kind of doubt many of us are. Um, okay, that's really all that I had in fraudulent land. I just really wanted us to hit the basics because we hadn't covered it in a long time and we need to be couponing correctly. When we coupon incorrectly, it just kind of ruins it for all the rest of us. Um, but if y'all have other questions, we can gladly go wherever your questions take us the rest of our time. Um, my plan too, uh, we're going to have hangouts for the next few weeks. I don't really have any reason for us to stop um, for a little bit. And we're going to go into drugstores next because we were kind of covering the basics all over again. So we're actually going to talk how to use the drugstores. We haven't talked Rite Aid in a while since they activated their plenty points. Um, so we can talk Rite Aid and CVS and Walgreens uh, at length. And we'll probably do that over the course of two weeks. Um, mostly because I'm not very good at getting all three drugstores done in an hour and answering questions. There's a lot of information there. Um, now, Tere asked, should we get a new account for CVS coupons? Right now, Tere, I don't think that's going to help either. I think the system is just very, very broken. I kind of feel for whoever did it. It's like you took a system and that was working and you broke it, and who knows what corporate thinks of you for doing that. Um, so you're not alone. Um, I wouldn't worry about going through and making a whole bunch of changes um, to your CVS account. I would really just let's give them another month or so and let's see if they can get this ironed out. Let's grab the deals that we can without store coupons uh, and hopefully we'll see all of our store coupons resume um, very soon. Um, would be great. So using a wireless laser jet printer 
when printing coupons, which one would you say the cost of ink would, you, would be the cheapest to use? So Elizabeth, my favorite printer is a Brother, and I'll put it into chat, um, and they've renumbered it. So it's a Brother HL 2240 or uh, 2230. It's the same printer. I don't really know why they gave it a new number. That printer routinely goes on sale at least once a month for right around $55 to $59. It comes with toner. It's a laser printer. It comes with toner that will print around 700 sheets. You can get a high yield replacement toner um, that's maybe 15 bucks, as Rosalie mentioned, from Amazon, maybe 20 max. The high yield toner can print around 1,500 to 2,000 sheets. We replace that maybe every year and a half. That is the cheapest that you can possibly get uh, uh, all the way around for your coupons. It's just black and white. It's not a color printer, but your coupons are just fine in black and white. So don't waste the money on color, uh, especially not color laser, because that's going to get you into the hundreds and hundreds of dollars for a printer. If you want a wireless version of that printer, get the 2270. Um, so it's still a brother printer, but the 2270 is the wireless version. Keep in mind, it does not work with all computers. I'm a Mac girl. Mac does not work with a brother wireless printer. So don't waste your time if you're a Mac. Just stick with the old school version. And honestly, for my laptop, I can sit here. I could print all the coupons that I wanted. They're going to download and hold in the print queue. I could do that all day long. And then once a day, go and plug into the printer and it will print all the coupons that I've told it to print throughout the day. So I don't really have to be sitting next to the computer all day long or plugged into the computer, but I don't want to waste the money on the wireless version if I have a Mac because it's not going to work. It'll work perfectly with any PC, um, but they just don't with Macs. But you know what? For that price, I'm okay with it. You're not going to be able to get a, a laser printer for the same price that's, that's that great. Um, so that is the printer that I would highly recommend. Um, I need to go work for the company as some brand ambassador or something, but it's a really great printer and a ton of us have them in coupon land. Um, Rosalie has a question on MobiSave. I signed up on July 9th and I'm still waiting. Do you know the average wait time? So Rosalie, I looked it up recently for me um, and MobiSave for me, it took two months from the time that I joined the wait list until they actually let me in. Um, or actually, it was, it was six weeks now that I look at it. So April 20th, I joined the wait list. May 11th, I was approved. Um, so it's, it's going to take you a chunk of time. And that was, not, uh, a, that was not when everybody was still even pushing it as hard as they are now. So um, that was before I put it on Southern Savers. It was before other people put it on their sites. And the problem is that they're trying to only allow folks in as they have offers available to them. Um, so I think this the wait is going to take a little bit longer than it has been. Um, but I would probably, you know, hope that you're in within six weeks and you should be good. Um, hopefully. Okay. Um, what about meat coupons? Any place to find meat coupons? Um, there are some, Randy, there are not a ton, and most of them are more for brands um, like Butterball, Lunch Meats, um, some organic like Applegate Farms. You're not gonna find many for just beef or pork, and if you do, it's gonna require another purchase. So it's like a dollar off beef when you buy four hamburger helpers. It's not really that great. One fun place to find a savings on meat, though, uh, it's a little non-traditional, is beer rebates. So walk up and down the beer and alcohol aisles and find the little tear pads that are next to bottles of wine and whatnot. The fun part about these rebates is probably about 90% of them do not require a meat purchase. And depending on where you live, they can't require a meat purchase. So that would even be in the fine print. I would say um, for these are like to give you an example of one that I found a couple of weeks ago, it's $3 off any beef purchase um, rebate. Uh, it's a mail-in rebate with the purchase of two Coronas. Um, 
the coupon then in the fine print says Coronas are not required. So it's really $3 off beef. And some of these are actually coupons and not rebates. So you may luck out and not even have to mail it in, but that's an easy place to find savings on meat is just looking for those. Uh, they're always in the alcohol section and it's weird what they decide to link together. So just keep an open mind and who knows why they were trying to sell beef with their beer. But it's kind of their workaround um, because most states do not allow discounts on alcohol. So that's why we're seeing two things. We're seeing those rebates pop up that are really a discount off beef, alcohol not required, and apps. If you notice Ibotta and a couple of the other apps, you feel like all they have is alcohol savings. It's because legitimately they can't give you an in-store savings on that alcohol. It's against state laws, but they can through an app because you paid for it in the store, you paid full price for it in the store, and then you came home and you submitted your receipt to get the discount on the alcohol. So at least the ones we find in the store very rarely require the purchase of the alcohol. It's the discount on the meat or produce or chips or whatever else they're for. But um, whether you want alcohol or not, walking through that section really fast just to look for coupons is one of the biggest little like insider tips that I could give you. Uh, Teray asks about luggage. We do a lot of travel for med um, medical travel. When's the best time of the year to buy luggage? Um, it's kind of a tricky one, Teray. You'll find some discounts in just the whole fourth quarter period that are more um, like holiday sale type discounts, and those can be really great sales. Um, I don't want to say Black Friday necessarily, but a lot of people do put them on sale for Christmas. It's a strange request, but a lot of people, for some reason, want luggage around the Christmas um, season. So that time period, January clearance, you can also find some pretty good deals on. Um, once you get into summer, not going to find deals there. So for you, I would wait and try to see what you can find um, probably starting October, October, November. Um, not necessarily December. December is the time for discounts on toys and electronics. December is people are now realizing that they have X number of days until Christmas and they're in panic mode and luggage and appliances and things like that aren't in that list. But October, November, and January would probably be my, my biggest guess for the best deals possible. And shopping online, uh, probably not locally for those, um, would be also where I would point you to. Okay. Um, any other questions? I will gladly go there. I see a couple of you typing, so I know there's a delay between what I'm saying and when you finally see it. Um, so I'm not going to like hop off immediately. We'll give you some time to finish typing. Um, I did a workshop this past weekend um, at the Becoming Conference on how to save money on everything. And folks kept me hopping for almost an hour just with a ton of questions similar to yours to write, like how do we save on this? How do we save on that? And kind of realized how just so many little like specific things are different and have little tips. So anytime someone has that, I am more than welcome to jump there. I just don't always think about uh, various things that folks are wanting. Like one in particular that folks asked was how do we save on flights? So just to answer that one while y'all are typing in, um, a very big tip that I would give you for saving on flights, odds are you're going to be booking them online. Most of us don't go through travel agents anymore. Um, but if you've been hunting for flights for a little while, the best tip I can give you is that you keep clearing your cash or your history. So you go up, um, it's usually under history, like for Google Chrome, it's under history. Um, for Firefox, it's in the same way. I clear my history before I go back to orbits or wherever I'm headed because they remember you. And when they see that you return and you make the same search again, they actually raise the price of the airline tickets. But if you clear your history, you clear your browsing cookies, all of that, I know it clears your passwords. So you better remember your logins to all the various sites that keep you logged in. Um, but it's gonna save you some money because you're gonna notice that that airline ticket's jumping by like 15 and 20 bucks a pop every single time. It's gonna go back down because it's gonna decide that you're not not a returning visitor. It's kind of an inside trick. Um, another one for any of those things, even Teray, is to remember um, cash back. 
savings. So going through Ebates or Savings Star or Shop at Home. There are tons of sites that offer cash back now um, before I make any online purchase, even flights luggage, whatever you're grabbing, uh, is a big way to save as well. Um, so Tere, if I was looking for the best deal on luggage, and it was me personally, I'm probably going to look at Kohl's first, because Kohl's does sell them online. Kohl's allows you to use multiple coupon codes together. So if I found a coupon code for um, $20 off of a hundred dollars $100 purchase in housewares, which luggage is included in, I could use that 20 off 100 in housewares. I could use a 20% off my entire purchase. I could use both of those together. I can earn cash back on my purchase from Kohl's and hopefully Kohl's cash if I'm buying at the right time, which most of the holiday season, Kohl's is going to run Kohl's cash. So now I'm saving a ton between the Kohl's cash that I'm earning back, both coupon codes and cash back by going through Ebates. Uh, and Kohl's is probably going to end up being the best deal on whatever luggage it is that you're looking for. Um, so that would be my, like, how do you really hone this down and get the best deals possible? Um, okay, so all of you, I got a whole bunch of coupon or questions all there at the same time. Saving Star seems to be taking longer to add money to my account, and also I've been getting denied receipts. Any thoughts on this, or is it just me? So Melanie, for me, I haven't gotten a lot of denied receipts, but I also work on um, a lot of, or I sorry, work. I shop in a lot of stores that are direct card-based stores. So Publix, Bilo, CVS, Rite Aid, those are all stores that I scan my card in the store and they tell Saving Star what I purchased. Um, so I haven't really been having issues with card-based things. Receipt-based issues, I would take them up with Saving Star directly. I would send them an email, you know, hey, I bought the right item. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they're not either having some software issues related to that or like resource issues. Uh, I'm not quite sure how they process their receipts, whether it's an actual person that looks at them or a computer that scans them. Um, but if it's a person that looks at them and they're just having a hard time keeping up with uh, you know, employees to handle that, then that could be the time issue um, versus software. But you should be letting them know. So whenever you have an issue, kind of sharing that. And Melanie, if they don't respond to you, let me know. Because I actually, I do know someone that is in their marketing department kind of high up, so I can at least ask him. But try first to see if you get a response. And if not, um, I don't mind emailing him and seeing if he'll at least answer my question on it too. Um, so how do I know if the Ziploc Catalina in Kroger is valid? I saw a comment the other day and someone said that it did not work in their store. Um, the number one way to know Tere would be that you went in and you actually saw it tagged. So I looked at the Ziploc and I, I looked at the Ziploc price on the shelf and right below the price, part of the sale ta tag was uh, a mention of the Catalina offer. Um, some of them are regional and a year ago I would have told you how to look it up. Currently, um, there is not an online way to tell uh, what regions or what stores things are participating for. They took that site down. It was actually the Catalina company that was running it, um, but they don't uh, have it. They took it down about a year and a half ago. Um, as far as where it's running right now, um, I haven't seen anybody mentioning regions on it. I'm trying to quickly see if I can find something just in hunting. Um, but it, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not a regional offer that's only happening in certain areas. Um, it is valid in Kroger. It's just what regions um, and that part can be tricky. So see if you if someone leaves a comment um, time or you read the comment, um, try coming back and saying, you know, what area are you in or where did you, um, where did you buy this so that you can learn a little bit more about it. Um, the only downside is that I'm pretty sure that this Ziploc deal ends soon. Um, and I can't remember the exact dates, but I want to say it ends on the first if it's not a, a new one um, that I missed. So trying very hard to get my very slow internet to 
load things and search the answer for you while, uh, let's see, it's going to take it a second to load. I'll come back while it loads that. Um, are there any sales for sunscreen this week? Um, this is one where I would point you to the item search that's on Southern Savers. I'm not 100% sure, but I can search for you um, really quickly, hopefully. We'll see. Um, but if you head to uh, the item search that's up at the top right-hand corner of the site um, and just type in sunscreen, it should... Um, tell you any deals that are available. Sunscreen season is over in most stores. You'll even notice CVS and whatnot have all put um, their even summer gear on sale 25% off. Already we'll see 50% here in the next couple of weeks. So you may have missed sunscreen offers um, now that it's back to school season. Um, yeah, the only sale it's running is at BJ's. So not a lot of help in sunscreen land. We do still have some sunscreen coupons. Um, so you can hop onto the database and try to find them there. Um, so Randy, we started out with coupon fraud, definitely. And we were there for about 30 minutes. Uh, I always start with wherever, with whatever I've decided the topic is. And then we go wherever questions take us. Um, so if you missed the first part where we talked coupon fraud, you can always watch that again on the Southern Savers YouTube page. Um, or if you have a specific question, shout out, and I'll gladly answer a specific question on coupon fraud as well again. Um, so Jessica says, I'm struggling with drugstore deals. Several times I've left CVS extra care bucks. I've let them expire. And my CVS says they do not accept them after they ex have expired, and I've tried many times. When I make my list from Southern Savers, there are only a few things that I would buy, tissue, paper towels, deodorant, soap. My Harris heater seems to win out even on those, not including extra care bucks. Any suggestions? Um, I guess, Jessica, I don't know what's available to you in your area. Um, my first suggestion to you might be, and I can't believe I'm going to say this because it seems very anti-me, but my first suggestion might be that you actually try Rite Aid for right now. If you're having an issue with getting back in there before rewards expire, the new Rite Aid Plenty Point system, the points never expire. As long as you're in there once a year, your points will stay there. Um, so you have plenty of time to get back in and use the Plenty Point system, um, no pun intended. But when you're in there, they, they're still running the same deals. They're still running the free toothpaste and um, the paper towels and the toilet paper deals, the all the personal care, diapers, whatever you're needing to grab. And the fun part about the Plenty Point system as well is that I can turn around and use those points at other places. I can also use them and earn them like I would in CVS. So in CVS, I earned $5 in extra care bucks and then I use that $5 to help pay for more deals. I can do that same thing in Rite Aid. I can't do it in Walgreens as well. Walgreens is really, really tricky. But right, it is not. So if I went in and I had $10 in plenty points um, or 1,000 plenty points, I could buy more items two weeks from now, month from now, whenever you went back, and I would have $10 off of my purchase. And then I would still earn more points from that purchase. And you can do that. But you can also use those points other places. And so that's where maybe you aren't going to be always in the drugstore. Maybe you're just waiting for the few deals that you do need so you're in there, you know, every six weeks, whatever, but you don't really want to sit there and just keep racking up points and forget about them. You can use plenty of points at Mobile and Exxon stations, at Macy's, and a few other places even. So I keep earning points, uh, and I can turn around and use them other places. And one other thing to kind of throw out at you is that there are some grocery coupons on plenty.com, and that's P-L-E-N-T-I. Dot com. There are some grocery offers and you can load your Harris Teeter card number into the system and actually earn plenty points straight from scanning your Harris Teeter card at the register. Um, and now I have more points to use when I head to Rite Aid or when I go to Exxon Mobil stations or wherever I'm going. So you can kind of put the two together. But I am a CVS girl. I love CVS. The frustrations with CVS coupons right now are being a little difficult for me. Um, but just the flexibility of the Plenty Point system 
with you already having issues with rewards expiring might be the way to go if you have one in your area. That's where I would probably push you. Uh, okay, let's explain Publix and Saving Star again. So with Saving Star, you need to head to Publix and you need to pick up a You Promise key tag. Um, this is a green uh, little key tag that you're going to have. Um, I'll try to find an image for you. So you want to head to, it's loading, um, you want to head to Publix and I will share my screen. It's really just a whole bunch of uh, Google images, but you'll get the idea. Um, you see the green, you promise, little key tag pictures there. You want to grab one of these you promise key tags and then head into, um, sorry, head into Publix, pick the, up the card, then head online and register that. Now the card, oh, um, sorry, just jumped to another question. Um, the card will tell you to go to youpromise.com. Ignore that. Take the YouPromise card that you just got from Publix. Go to savingstar.com and register it. And then from Savingstar, you can either use the app or you can use um, savingstar.com. And you want to load all of the coupons that you think you're going to use or just load all of them because there's no reason not to. So from, um, from the app, I'm going to sit here, see if you can see it, the little plus signs. I'm going to click the plus signs, and I'm going to add each of the offers that I think I'm going to use straight to my account. Then I go into Publix. I buy peaches. I scan the You Promise key tag. They're going to tell Saving Star that I have bought the item, and I'm going to get the money back in my Saving Star account. So that's exactly how it works. It's using the You Promise key tag but plugging it into the Saving Star system just to be as confusing as humanly possible. What's the best place uh, or best way to save on breastfeeding supplies? No, Brady, it's a really good day to ask me that. I got an email today that diapers.com is running uh, its National Breastfeeding Month and that they are running sales um, all month long, 15% off breast pumps, 20% off accessories, 25% off apparel. Um, I went and played around with a bunch of prices and then realized that Amazon is price matching all of their prices without needing a coupon code. Um, so a lot of things are on sale, needless to say, um, that you're looking for. Now, uh, if you're wanting like just bags and uh, cleaners and attachments and whatnot, Sometimes going straight through the brand can be a good way to save or even going to a hospital lactation consultant because sometimes they'll just give them to you for free. Um, but diapers.com and the code, um, oh, if I hadn't tried to think about it, I could have remembered it. Um, let me see. I'll search my email really quick and see if I can get it to come back up. Uh, is BF, it's loading, BF month. That's easy. So I'll put it in here. BF month um, gets you the diapers.com discount for 15% um, off pumps, 20% off accessories, and 25% off apparel. Uh, diapers.com also offers free shipping with any $49 purchase, but always check Amazon because Amazon had, had price matched all of the pumps. I couldn't find any of them cheaper. Um, so it's at least a, a shot between either of those two sites. Will book bags be going free anytime soon? So we see a lot of those deals today come August, uh, and we're here, but probably another week or so before they really start to hit that mark because a lot of schools don't even start back for another week or two, uh, and they really go with the free backpack promotions once school started because they know that if they don't sell them, that they're stuck with them. Um, they're going to be with other offers. So it's going to be like a free backpack when you buy blank or a free backpack after rewards. That's what a lot of them had, uh, were last year, Office Depot, Office Max, and Staples. Um, but probably give it another week to two weeks before we see those. Uh, we are already seeing some super deep, super cheap ones, though. Um, we saw $3.99 backpacks last week. We're seeing 25% off. Um, and $5 backpacks uh, at other office supply stores too. Can I explain Catalina's? Um, so a Catalina promotion, Izetta, is that you go into the store, you buy participating items, uh, and then on after you've checked, 
done your checkout, you've even paid the little coupons that print next to your receipt. They're not on your receipt. They're just on separate pieces of paper that almost look like sausages. They're all kind of connected, but still cut at the same time. Um, those coupons, not when they're just for a product, but when they're for $2 off your next purchase, thanks for buying Huggies, $5 off your next purchase, thanks for buying you know, Procter & Gamble items, that's a Catalina offer. And sometimes you get those and you have no clue what you bought. It just randomly printed this piece of paper off your next purchase. Now you'll get coupons for just a dollar off Pampers, diapers. Um, that is not, it's printed by the Catalina company. That's what why they have that name. But it's not really what we would consider a Catalina offer. That's just a coupon. Um, so a Catalina offer is off your total purchase. It does print along with all those other dollar off random coupons but I can turn around and use it on anything that I buy next time. I don't have to use it on diapers or pampers. Um, that's what those are. The tricky part is knowing what generates them to print um, so that you can get them in the store. And then remember that most of the time I can grab that. Let's say, let's say I, I bought two Ziploc items and I got a $2 Catalina back. That was the Ziploc offer that Trey was uh, asking about earlier. Well, if I went in and I bought two Ziplocs, two Ziploc products, I got the Catalina. After I paid for $2 off my next purchase, I could actually take that Catalina, buy two more Ziplocs right behind it, scan the $2 off coupon. It's not a coupon for Ziploc, so I can still use a coupon for Ziploc products. I got the $2 off. I'm gonna get a complete another one for $2 off. So Catalina coupons can be used on future purchases that print more Catalina offers 99% um, of the time. Can I speak, uh, can I basically compare Aldi versus Publix with coupons? And I've, have I ever done a post about a how-to with Aldi? Um, I don't know that I've done an Aldi how-to and I could definitely work on that. That's a great idea. So Aldi, obviously I can't use coupons. There are some things to avoid if you're an Aldi shopper and that's anything that's national brand. So the special buys in Aldi, they are not special. Do not touch them. They are a bad price. The grocery stores will beat the Aldi special buy, I promise. Um, it's not even near a 50% off mark usually, plus I can use a coupon in the grocery store for those national brand products. The rest of the products though in Aldi are not national brand, they only sell house brand. And for me, Aldi becomes like a really great price book. If I know that Aldi sells canned vegetables for 55 cents a can, then my goal is to beat that price in Publix. And usually I can. Now I'm in an area that doubles, so if you're not in an area that doubles, that may actually be trickier for you. And, and Aldi may be right there, very much comparable to Publix. Um, but for me, I can usually get canned vegetables between 30 to 40 cents a can in Publix versus 55 cents a can in Aldi. That's just one example. There are some things that Aldi's going to win at. Aldi has really good prices on dairy, um, butter, cheese, milk, all of that. They have good prices on eggs, um, meat, and produce. So there are some folks that are kind of loyalists because of that section of the store. For me, I am not an Aldi produce fan. It goes bad really, really fast. I can't always eat it as fast. And I, I do not buy Aldi meat just from a really bad experience a number of years ago that I have no desire. Kind of burned that bridge. Um, you are welcome to do whatever you'd like though. That's my experience. Um, I would price match in that boat. I would head to Walmart and I would say, hey, Aldi has pineapples for 99 cents or Aldi has pumpkins for 99 cents because we saw that last year. Um, Walmart will price match Aldi. I now have a pumpkin for 99 cents, but I didn't have to actually make a separate trip to Aldi. Uh, odds are I was already in Walmart for something. I'm not there all the time, but we sent it in date night there for some reason. So if we're in the store for, some, for something else, I'm gonna grab whatever the Aldi produce deal was while I'm in there, just so we can save a little bit more. Um, I don't tend to go to Aldi very often though, because I can beat most of their prices in the grocery store with national brands. And you kind of become a national brand snob after a while because that's what we buy the most of. That's what's on sale. That's what we have coupons for to where house brands just, they just don't seem the same anymore because you've gotten this national brand for so long, you've been a little spoiled. Um, but I will work on one for you uh, and get it up soon. A how-to, if you did want to just stick with Aldi, what to buy, what not to buy, so that you're saving the most while you're in there. Okay. Um, I see two of you typing. 
we've hit the 930 mark, which is where I try to end us just so that we're kind of mindful of everybody's time. And hopefully we covered some things that you wanted to learn. If you joined us late and you missed a lot of the fraudulent Q&A, um, then by all means, hop on YouTube and you can watch this as soon as we're done. It will be saved and uploaded there. Uh, and then join me next week, same time, uh, same dining room table. Uh, 8.30 Eastern, we're going to talk drugstores, we're going to start with CVS, then Rite Aid, then Walgreens, uh, and we'll just get as far as we can in all of those, and I'll still get to questions, so if you have questions and other things, that's fine. Um, so if we only get to CVS, then we'll do Rite Aid the week after that. We'll, we'll work through it, not in any hurry, because we do these every week, so we can take our time with them if that's what we want to do. Um, but hopefully we answered some questions. Y'all have a great week and I will chat with you again next week.